some footage together over the Christmas period really of all uh, my decent clips from 2021. Uh, started with this clip just because I've been using a GoPro Hero 9 this year. I've had some trouble with it freezing when recording in 4K so I've now switched to 1080 but um, yeah so unfortunately I uh, never got this fish on film which is one of my biggest regrets because it's it was my PB fish of 2021. Anyway, here's the video clips from 2021. First one starting in March and the last one in September. So I've included um, just a couple of screenshots of what my breath holds were at the start and what they were at the finish. So I've seen massive improvement in terms of my breath hold and my just my hunting ability. Uh, you'll notice in a lot of the videos, I'm quite low in the kelp and picking my shots much better. And it actually feels like I've you know made massive progress uh, through the season. I would say a lot of it's down to my buddies pushing me and just getting out much more often this year. Also went on a spear fishing course with a Frenchman. Uh, just learned so much on it. It was, it was absolutely awesome. Uh, the first clip in fact is uh, the safety part of the course. Just included a small clip of um, me rescuing Richard from the bottom. Yeah, so here it is, guys. This is just something that I've you know, been spearfishing for a few years now. Never done anything like this, you know, and really speaking, it's probably the most important part of the spearfishing uh, safety side of it, being able to you know, rescue your buddy. end of March here now this was my first uh, dive of 2021 we're actually scallop diving uh, we were blessed with some real nice viz uh, plenty of scallops about yeah it was seven degrees so my breath holds weren't great at the start but it was nice to get in the water early and get a feel for it So this was the start of June in uh, South Coast Wales. As you can see, the water isn't very clear. It was probably only a couple of meters viz, but definitely doable. Uh, this was my first bass of the season. I'd shot uh, a few pollock early on, but like you said, I had issues with my uh, GoPro recording. So um, yeah, that was that was just massive uh, regret of the season really, is not catching that early footage, but you can see uh, um, a lot of sediment pretty big swell but yeah it shows it can still be done <laughs> So this was the, actually the same day, just found a little bit of a sheltered cove. You can see the viz is much better. So we're pretty much in shallow water, tight up against the headland. And I was just using the kelp here to get down quietly. Um, managed to get myself comfortable and hidden. And you can just see a few bass moving underneath me. So I patiently wait to manage to uh, get a decent shot on one. I included this clip just in case uh, anyone hasn't seen it before, ah. but this was the bioluminescence in Portainen Bay. 
Um, oh, it's one of the best experiences I've had, especially under the water. The, the colours are just incredible. Yeah, so this is uh, sort of getting towards the end of June. Typical sort of viz for us. Slightly deeper dive here because I've, I've tucked my gun in. Uh, just getting to the bottom, sitting in in a good position in the kelp, trying to keep my gun down um, and sort of, yeah, could hear the bass sort of vibrating around me as they were moving in. So just sat patiently and managed a nice shot on this one. So yeah, into July now, much more bass around, uh, getting nice flat conditions, good viz. Uh, I was really pleased with this clip, by, um, I wanted to add it in just, just a little bit longer because I had to wait, the, wait a while, but um, yeah, I've kept my gun down right to the end, I'm low, I can see this bass coming in for quite some time, but he just wouldn't quite come in, so um, kept myself really low. And then just when he was too close to change his mind, just managed to reach out and, uh, and plug him. <laughs> this, this clip is uh, sort of the end of July. This is when uh, Max and Soph decided to visit us and we went to see the puffins. It was, uh, yeah, weather wasn't great, but it was hell of a day. These are all puffins flying around us and gannets. It was just, uh, yeah, it was an amazing sight. So um, yeah, just added this clip in. This is my Inverno 90 wooden gun. I've usually got it set up with twin 14s, but I actually uh, snapped the band this day. Um, so I thought one band would be enough. And this bass actually come off the spear. Um, you can see it was well hit, looked for it everywhere. But um, yeah, unfortunately uh, couldn't find it. It's just so frustrating when that happens, but a good lesson to learn. I should have changed guns. <laughs> Yeah, so this was the same day. Um, yeah, this this was, I think, the only pollock I shot that day. But um, when I've been diving down on sort of steep pinnacles, I've sort of lost my bottle a bit when it gets to sort of 12 to 14 meters. So what I've found to, you know, to help my mind a little bit is I've been swimming down the, the steep side and sort of just creeping down bit by bit. Yeah, nothing to shout home about, but just uh, a little thing that I found has uh, helped me on them, sort of that little bit of deeper ground. Yeah, so here you can just see the bass starting to um, circle me. Uh, this usually isn't a good thing for me because I get a little bit excited and uh, my breath all goes all the pot. But uh, yeah, this was really shallow ground. Managed to just sort of tuck myself on the bottom. I usually dive with about six kilos on my belt. Uh, but this occasion I added a vest on which I got two kilos in. Just make it that much more comfortable in the shallow ground. Uh, so yeah, just pick off a bass for the night here. So 
so I put this video in is actually from the same day. Um, I didn't actually shoot any fish here. I was a little bit hesitant and I couldn't really see a standout bass that I wanted. But um, in the top of the screen, right at the start, uh, a mackerel comes straight across me. He's just coming in now. Uh, from the back you can just about see him just there in the top right of the screen well on the night i never even saw him otherwise would have had a had a pop So this day we uh, we got to the bit of ground we wanted to dive and um, there was just no viz. It was sort of 50 cent centimetres to a metre at best. Um, I usually have never even bothered getting in the water here. Um, we were diving sort of 8 to 10 metres for scallops but um, one of my dive buddies is French and absolutely mad um, and he sort of pushed me to do it. He came down with me a couple of times. It was probably one of the best things I did all season just because um, I'd never normally done that, you know, in, unless someone had pushed me. Um, it was perfectly safe, he, you know, went too deep and he was down beside me. We were buddying each other well. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, made me appreciate, appreciate the clear days. So this next bit of uh, footage was my first trigger fish of the season. Um, there was just a couple of them shoaling round. Unfortunately, I didn't get much better footage than this really, but uh, you can just see them in the, in the distance there. It's not the best. <laughs> This was um, probably middle of August, so we had a day in Chepstow, uh, freshwater line diving. Uh, th this was brilliant for me because uh, one of the goals of the season was to try and improve my depth and uh, just, you know, being able to do it in a safe environment. I'm only going to 20 metres here, um, just straight up and back, but it felt so comfortable, especially having a buddy with you. And um, yeah, the, the plan is next year to do a little bit more of this get a little bit deeper so that um, you know when I'm diving the deeper ground in the sea I'm hoping to be a little bit more comfortable there. season the dive itself just felt right uh, the, the descent just the way I was positioned uh, it was actually a pretty decent head shot as well yeah it felt like everything had come together on this dive So this was my one and only mullet of the season. There was bass in amongst them, but I think this day I had actually shot my two bass limit, so decided on a mullet to take home. But yeah, conditions were lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
here I got to try out uh, Dan Newman's uh, Gladius in 85. Absolutely lovely gun. Uh, as you can see, I haven't loaded it very well across the bands, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. Uh, just such a lovely gun to track. It's light. Everything about it feels super well made. So uh, thanks, Dan, for letting me have it. Ooh. Aside from this gun and the uh, Inverno 90, uh, all the other fish have been shot with my 75 and 90 uh, tarpon or fins for you, Fury. Um, yeah, can't rate them highly enough to be honest. I absolutely love them. So, uh, yeah, this is my uh, seven year old son uh, retrieving a trigger fish. He actually shot himself. Um, this day will forever live in my memory for being one of the best days I've ever had out. He was, uh, he was just amazing. Uh, everything about it just uh, seemed to come together for him. We've seen uh, plenty of fish. Yeah, so this is the same day. It's probably his second shot of the gun. And he stones a bass. Uh, as you can tell, me and my buddy Richard were probably a little bit more excited than he was. So shout out to Richard forever taxiing us about in the boat and uh, yeah to be fair this day he barely shot a fish himself uh, we both sort of made the day about Eli and uh, yeah it was it was it was awesome So this dive was down at the Pete Crawford Memorial down in Pentewyn Sands. So probably my longest breath all of the season. But as you can see, it's more than double from the start. It's just so satisfying to see the progress uh, throughout the year. Uh, anyway, guys, that's, that's it, really. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, like and subscribe for the next video.